Hello, Jonathan Stark here, and in this video I want to introduce you to just a handful of Git commands that will allow you to start using Git in place of FTP for moving files around between your local machine and your web server. Um, all right, so where we're going to start is uh, let's just imagine that you've been doing some work on a prototype or a new project and you've been just working on your local machine and hosting it locally. Uh, here I've got a little sampled web directory uh, for an application, a web application called Kilo. I am using MAMP to host it locally. And if I launch a web browser and go to localhost, you can see the application. And we could log in, et cetera, et cetera. So we've got this little application running locally. Now I want to put this on a web server so that the, the client can review it or quality assurance people on my team can re look for bugs or whatever. Um, and, and normally, in the past, you might just FTP the files from your local machine to your web server, which would be fine the first time. But then as time goes on and you have more and more files and maybe some of them you don't want to transfer back and forth because they have different settings for your local environment or the web server environment, uh, it gets pretty complicated uh, about which files to move. Also, you potentially have to move lots and lots of files when really you've only changed a couple of them. Uh, so you want to be a little more surgical uh, about it and it's tough to keep track of which files you change locally and which ones you should FTP up. And also you could have other people working on versions of the files elsewhere and using FTP makes it really easy for someone else to upload files and stomp on the changes that you uploaded previously. So FTP uh, is, has a, it's very simple, but it has a lot of drawbacks. And I think uh, for more modern workflows, especially with teams that Git is maybe got a couple more steps to it, but it's a far superior approach. All right, so we're not going to FTP the files up, even though it's ready to go on the server. We're going to use... Uh, Git. Uh, so the first thing I need to do um, to make Git aware of this directory is to initialize the directory. And we're going to do that in the terminal. There are some command line clients for this. Uh, sorry, not command line, uh, but some GUI applications for this that you can download from GitHub or elsewhere on the web. But I recommend actually learning the command line piece because uh, we're actually going to be using some Git commands on the remote web server. And in this, in my case, it's a Linux machine and I don't have like remote desktop access to it. I only have SSH access to it. So I won't be able to run um, a, like a GUI application on the remote machine. So um, it's very helpful to get familiar with the, the command line because you can uh, do the same things on any machine and it'll work everywhere. I'm going to try and really limit it to a couple of commands, uh, maybe a half a dozen commands at the most, so to keep it really simple. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is change directory or CD into my uh, my little application, Kilo here. And I want Git to know about this directory, so I'm going to say Git in it. And that just says that Git should start watching for changes inside of this directory. Um, if you, if, if you run git init locally and it tells you that uh, git's not installed. There's tons of tutorials on how to get git installed on your platform, so I'm not going to talk about that here. It's, it's really easy to do. Um, but I already have it installed, so I initialize the directory. So now if I look in the directory, if I list the contents, you can see this .git directory has been added to my uh, directory. That wasn't there before. That's there now because I just did the initialization. And it's like a little database, a file system based database that tracks changes to the files in this directory. So now I can run a command called git status to figure out how things are looking or like what git thinks is going on right now. It tells me I'm on a branch called master. That's the default branch. I'm not going to talk about branches. We'll just stay on master the whole time here. And it tells me I've got a whole bunch of untracked files. And what that means is that um, git sees that there are files in this directory, but it's not tracking changes to them yet because I haven't explicitly told it to. All the creation, like when I created all those files and made any changes to those files previously, it was before Git was watching for changes, so it doesn't really know anything about them. All it knows is that they're there. So I, what I want to do is add them, just like it says here, 
in this uh, instruction, nothing added to commit, but untracked files are present. So use git add to track. So I'm going to use git add, and then the period to indicate the local directory. And git will recursively add everything that's in the local directory uh, into its change log. Okay, great. So now if I run git status again, you can see that there are a whole bunch of changes to be committed. So now git knows, hey, you know, there's a whole bunch of new files. So that it considers that a change. New files have been added. And technically what it's called is that I've, I've just staged these files to be committed. So there's a phase um, uh, before you actually commit the files called staging, which I'll talk a little bit more about. But uh, initially, in a situation like this, I'm just going to add the files, uh, like I just did, git add dot, and then git commit. And then I can go dash m to uh, give a commit message, which you have to put in, and I'm just say initial commit. And that's not a very descriptive commit message, but that's the kind of thing you would do initially when you're just adding a ton of files to get started. Uh, in the future, I'm going to uh, want to make much more granular changes that are much more atomic level and, and for each kind of atomic change that I make uh, give a meaningful commit message uh, so that I can look back through the commit history later and potentially undo changes that I made so if I made maybe some style changes and then the website it doesn't take well it basically breaks the website I can go back through my history and say oh look here's a commit message where I said I changed some of that stuff so maybe let me look at that uh, so let's demonstrate some of that. Now what I'm going to do is make uh, a change to a, a file. Let me clear this here. Go to the desktop, and I'm just going to change a little bit of the header file. Change uh, the title of the page, so if we go back to... Here you can see, refreshingly simple, in the title of the HTML page, change it to redonkulously simple. And we can quit out of there. And now when I go back, uh, when I run that git uh, status command again, now that git is watching for changes to these files, it tells me that, hey, this header file has been modified. And this is a little bit more like the normal workflow, where you make a couple of changes, maybe one or two changes to uh, a couple of files. Maybe I change some CSS and a little bit of markup to change the way a widget works on my website. Uh, and then I do this uh, I do this status. It tells me which exactly which files have been changed. I can use git add. You can add individual files if you want, but usually uh, if you're keeping up with your commits, you can just add dot, meaning basically everything can stage that to be committed and then git commit changed title and commit that now I can run a command called git log and this shows me the different commits that I've had so far all right so now let's say I'm ready to actually um, push these to a server. I want to copy these files up to a web server so that my client can review. So what I'm going to do is well, actually a two-step process. What I want to do first is push them to a remote repository and I'm going to use GitHub as my remote repository and then I'm going to go to my web server and I'm going to pull the files down from there. So it's a push from my local machine to GitHub and then a pull from my web server uh, from GitHub down to the web server. And so that it does add an extra step, but it is just a million advantages that you get by adding that one extra step. So the, the next thing we need to do is go to GitHub, and you do need a GitHub account to use this. There's plenty of other uh, Git services like GitHub, but GitHub's my favorite. And I'm going to make a new repository, and I will call it Kilo. And I'll make it private so that other people can't view my source code. And I'll create the repository. So now what this has done is created a named space on the web uh, on the GitHub website, and it gives me some instructions here about what to do. Uh, if I was completely starting from scratch, I could follow the first instructions here, create a new repository on the command line. But I've already got an existing repository locally on my local machine, so I'm going to use these two commands: uh, git remote add and then git push. So uh, this is a one-time thing. It's just an initial setup thing. So I'm going to copy this, go back to my terminal window, 
paste git remote add origin. That's all you have to do there. And then I'm going to git push dash u origin master. And again, this is a one time thing. So it gives you some information about the files being copied up there, up to GitHub. So when I come back and I refresh the page in GitHub, you'll see a mirror of all the files that are on the local machine. So it's kind of conceptually like I FTP'd them to GitHub in a way. Um, but the difference is that my, I have a commit history here. So if I click on the commit log, you can see my initial commit here, which is when I added all those files. And then you can see where I changed the title. So I can click on that and actually see a diff, inline diff, of the changes that I made. And this, hopefully this is the point at which you say, wow, that's really cool. Because you can imagine if you make some changes to CSS file, you make a bunch of changes and you're not sure maybe uh, things didn't go so well and you want to roll back, you can come in here and look and you can either manually undo the changes or you, could actually, you can actually roll back these commits if you're a little bit more savvy with Git. Uh, so this is super, super powerful. And, and just imagine if you had multiple people working on the files at the same time. You get someone doing JavaScript, someone doing CSS. If both people are touching the markup. Uh, it can get pretty complicated. So this is, this is really, really useful in cases like that. All right, but we still don't have the files on the web server. Right now we just have them on GitHub. So now I want to go over to, uh, I'm going to open up a new tab in my terminal window. And I'm going to SSH into my web server. And SSH, I'm not actually sure what it stands for. I think it's Secure Shell. And I've got a shortcut set up for my web server. Um, but so you're, you know, you would type SSH and then the connection info for your machine. I'm not going to go into how to SSH into your web server. Hopefully you know how to do that. Um, it's, it's similar to FTP, but it allows you to run um, remote, a lot more remote commands on the, uh, on the web server, on the remote machine than you would normally be able to do with FTP. So then I, uh, once I'm on the remote machine, I CD into my web server directory. And I'm going to run a command called git clone to download the files from GitHub onto my local machine. And you need uh, a connection, basically a connection string from GitHub, and you can find it right here. Uh, go to the GitHub page for the uh, repo, and you'll find an SSH clone URL. And you just copy it to the clipboard, paste it into the terminal, and hit enter. It's going to create a directory called Kilo. Uh, in my case, my, my private key is protected with a password, so I type that in. And boom, I now have a Kilo directory on my web server. Now I've previously configured my web server to serve files out of a directory called Kilo in this location. So now if I go to um, the URL that's pointing at it, you will see that the files are now there and I can log in. And now this is the application on the remote server. This is the public web server. And this is the local uh, local files right here in this window. You can see here redonkulously in the title. So I've got the most recent changes here. And this page is, I haven't refreshed it since I made that change. If I do refresh it, then you can see the change here. So, so now the files are in sync, both locally on GitHub and on my web server. Now what I'm gonna do is make a change locally. Uh, I'll change the header back. to refreshly save that and you can this is these are silly changes that I'm making but you can imagine I could go in and, and tweak a bunch of stuff in the CSS or uh, the, the markup or whatever I could do a bunch of things uh, maybe I've got another developer who's cloned this repo locally and they're working on the icon files or whatever so now I've made changes locally and if I run git status you can see that it, it knows that I made some changes to the header. So the workflow is git add everything and then git commit message change title back. Then git push. Now everything's on GitHub. If I go over to GitHub. You can see change title back, see an extra commit. 
change title back. I can see the diff. Okay, so now everything's on GitHub. When I'm happy with all my changes that I've pushed to GitHub, I pop over to the web server in the terminal window and git pull. Type in my key. And now if I go to the the public web, web server version of this and refresh, you'll see the title has changed back to refreshingly. So now it might seem, if you compare this to an FTP style workflow, it might seem like I'm doing extra work here. And maybe I am doing an extra step by pushing to GitHub first and then pulling from the web server side instead of just copying stuff locally uh, from my machine to the web server. But like I said, uh, when in a, in a real situation, something not as simple as this, it can get really complicated keeping track of what should be FTP'd where and you would have no record of what changes were made when or by whom if you just use FTP. Another advantage of using GitHub is that you can set up your, um, in the settings for your uh, repo on GitHub, you can do a thing called, uh, you can set up a thing called webhooks. So in the service hooks tab here, I can go in and turn on uh, a webhook. And what that does is I just add a URL in here that would be on, on my public web server. And whenever I push to GitHub, the URL uh, that I specify here would get pinged and I could put a PHP script or whatever kind of script on my web server that actually did the pull automatically, which is actually how um, I typically would set this up with a team environment uh, uh, in development. So as everybody pushed from their local machines to GitHub, <laughs> things would automatically be updating on the development server or the testing server uh, for everybody. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you have questions, I'm happy to do more videos. Um, there's a million things that you can do with Git besides this. I'm not, not really doing it justice, but in terms of just replacing FTP with Git, uh, hopefully this is enough to get you started. Thanks.